Let's rock! Oh no! I think they might have turned it on to pro. Well, it's got a power light. Okay, do you want to see what this is? They're taking a look back at part 85. Well, it does have a screen. I I must admit, though, that tiny little CRT is quite cool. Good balance. Do you have to put a cartridge in, or...? It's like a cartridge slot here. We've got... Oh, man, that's in tight. Okay. Cartridge slot is in the oh. back. Error. 16. Continue before run. Oh. Is there a continue button? Advanced paper. Okay. Ooh, look print. And it's got a little printer. It's pretty cool. And it has a load rewind. So did he give you any cartridges? Oh, it's it's like, did he? Did he? Okay, so they look like the back of them. They're quick cartridges though. And the problem with quick cartridges are that they have this rubber bands. Oh, it's one of those. Oh, okay. The 48K certified data cartridge. So the problem with these is they use a rubber band. So this one's already broken. Sticky. Yeah, so this one's busted. So it's it's not I wasn't going to... That one's bad. I wasn't going to stick the man, but it's deep. Try it. Just yet. This one's actually broken. You can actually see it's come off the it's come off the actual um, spool. So my guess is that they might have tried to already do that. So they, these use the same technology as the quick quick cartridges, which I've just learned horribly recently trying to restore some data of mine from the nineties. They use a a rubber loop, and the rubber just snaps or breaks, and then. It can't actually move the um, move the tape, which is exactly what this one's doing too. So it's 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 a really unusual way of doing it. So there's no oh, loops on the back. It actually just runs the motor on this little turn here, which just run. There's a there's a rubber loop that runs around the tape that this just turns. The problem with that is. That rubber loop is like constantly touching the tape, so you can actually see it's just it's just fallen out there. It's it's oh, okay. so broken. It's, right. So really, I don't know. Oh, that, that, that thing down the bottom. Man. Yeah, I don't know why they designed the tapes like they did. It seems a bit crazy. But mm -hmm. you know, what if we just run? Is there something in line? No. Error forty eight in line. And top list. This has yeah, got so. um. Assembler input output. Add statement. 16K memory module. That's a, what's it called? A HBIB interface. Stick them in the back. Yeah, yeah. Tour of sorts. So, what's this one? A ROM draw. So, anyway, this is a ROM draw. Let's just turn it off for a second. I think it does smell a little fishy, so I think. We might have a uh, microscopy for smoke coming out. And so hang on, it says M and R. So I'm going to put the ROM in R. It's my guess is that the memory goes in thing one. That would make sense. Well, and just for anyone watching, um, Reefer is a brand of capacitor which burn out quite a lot. So whenever Murray talks about smoky rifles, <laughs> yes, he's um, it's not Cheech and Chai. No, you. Anyway, so okay, so we've got. <coughs> well, oh, so here, no, so well, the paper's working, which is good. You know, I don't want to print anything. Well, actually, can we do a print screen? Um, because if we can do a print screen, we can get to print lists. We'll stuck together. It's the original graph memo. Now it's just a pocket guy. Error messages, page 20. Oh. Oh. Just a fantastic thing. cannot. Yeah. Let's find it already online. 
No, it's quite cool. But yeah, getting getting those tapes. Yeah, I'm trying to work it. So I'm currently working oh, on some quick, right? quick tapes at the moment. Well, it's, yeah. it's not. So when I turn that, I'll notice it's just not, nothing's happening. So what's happening is it's, it's stuck. So the actual... So this little wheel is like a drive wheel, is it? It is, and it's just a turning this this elastic band basically which is this flat continuous elastic band yeah oh, and it's not moving because it's basically just melted onto yeah. the actual oh, yeah. surface of the tape so realistically there's nothing to stop if you can actually get new elastic these elastics made yeah. there's nothing to stop them from um yeah, being replaced right. you can you just take out you know, screws, the whole thing comes off. But I, I learnt myself with the elastic. Mm. My elastic was okay, but it, it actually bowed. And when it actually tried to run in the drive, it actually mangled the tape because it tried to basically, the tension was off. It needed the correct tension. So, I'd be easier, but that would just go like that. So, move the tape to it from cartridge if you need to recover data. No, so you can't because the actual the loop of rubber goes over the tape it's not actually independent that's what makes it such a silly yeah but you should be able to take the spool of tape out put it into something else to... no no but the rubber reels around it so you you have to replace the rubber that's the only option you've got to recover the data so you can't just move the tape to another unit because the actual rubber is attached around the actual I'll try one of those something different Oh, well, potentially, yes. Um, but it would be quite difficult. Yeah. Anyway, I think we'd better turn this off. Smokes. Yeah. But it is in impeccably good condition, I will say that. No, they're definitely all, all, all bad, so... So this is the, so the rubber band supposed to be over the top of it? No, no, no. The rubber band's behind it and it actually gets... By friction. These cartridges are pretty cool. Um, what was it? It wasn't. Who was the gentleman that came down from uh, Colt Macquarie? Um, Brett. He was showing me that the, these are the ROM cartridges and mm. um, you, you pull these oh, out. Take bits out of. Oh, and that's you, where your ROM chips actually sit. So you can yeah, see. So they should be in there. So you can see that those two actually have labels on them indicating there's ROMs behind mm -hmm. those units. Okay. So you, yeah, you've actually got just six. Proms now yeah. to get yeah they are very hard to get out so I'm not going to do that but you can see how you want to just push the ROM in you can see physically that there's two ROM chips in there and okay. none in there yeah 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 so it's uh, quite a cool little uh, setup so yeah that's the HB85 and. Uh, the other thing that Murray did get, which is not a standard function, uh, I've only learned about this recently, the HB-IV interface. So it's basically HB had this like interconnected interface mm -hmm. that all these kind of accessories, um, you know, um, monitors and floppy disks, etc., all just piggyback mm -hmm. through these like 20 pin um, or 22 pin uh, Centronics type connectors mm -hmm. um, and they they're you know, some kind of like an interface so um, it's it's quite cool and this unit uh, was a standard feature but they've got the expansion cartridge which is quite fascinating yeah sure what would you have been doing with a computer like this back in the day like like is it it, it, it is it kind of like a you know like a laptop now where you'd be running some kind of desktop type things like are you typing with letters or not? Um, well, you could it use it as a word processor, but no, HP was I guess scientific equipment, mm. so it would have been this would have been for scientific based output. Yeah. So you would have been writing say like a, a basic type application. Mm. That you would punch different integers into, get the data off the top. and yeah, so you you would have been punching certain things like, for instance, it's kind of like those sharp mini computers that were donated from the Department of Main Roads, the RTA, RMS. Yeah. There was a basic program where you punched in various X and Y locations and the program 
to, was designed to tell you the camber of the road required or the length of the road and the um, angle of attack and things like that. So um, it, it really came down to your own uh, ability to, to kind of understand not only computers but also mathematics to generate um, mm -hmm. little programs to make your life easy. So, you know, there's, there's no, no reason you couldn't have written an application that used this as an address book or as a calculator or, or anything else, but um, you would have written something specific for your particular line of work. And, and it would have been considered a portable, yeah? Like it's fairly With the case, absolutely. Yeah. Case, so, but 100%, this it so. does say it's not to be used as a shipping container. Yeah. Check through airlines as fragile instrument only. Yeah, yeah. so but you, you'll be taking this to, I don't know, what well, the, or something? Or? The value of these things would have been quite substantial mm. and obviously not a common product. So, so maybe they only had for instance, if you sure. were an engineer yeah. working for, I don't know, BHP or, or uh, maybe yeah. even like something like Coca-Cola Amatil or mm. something, you may be one of the few people in Australia with one of these and you may Ooh. actually um, take it with you on, on the plane as yeah. uh, as your product and you would have been quite a cool cat walking around with one of those, <laughs> especially the clever case that it's in. It's, it's beautifully manufactured and Murray's just mangling it here. Um, mm. But yeah, it is really it's fast um, tricky. It's not like a good carry case. Nothing and else. And it is a substantial carry mm. case as well. Yeah, it's very padded. It's, it's yeah. very padded. Yeah. But also you've got to assume too, this thing has that little a four inch, three and a half inch CRT in it. Yeah. Um, obviously yeah, quite delicate. Like that, not yeah, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to guess with a linear power supply, it's probably quite heavy mm. um, with that amount of glass, steel, and, um, and and just, you know, big old chunks of metal in it. So I see it's um, it hasn't, hasn't gone in the and it's comparable. It's got a jelly. Happy? If I know anything about like the night portable, it's got to go straight down it, you know. So you, there you go. Look at that. Like me. Not oh, it's, it's probably pretty close. And zip still works. And you can see like a lot of the nineteen. 80s equipment and it's got the little um window there that you put business card in so that you've got your name and address on it uh, yeah that's it but yeah i think when i say 1980s it's probably is it late 70s or is it early 80s might be 1980 79 80. okay so i don't know that's yeah. very fast in the 70s well, like it's that. it's definitely got to be earlier than like 85, 86. I, um, I, can I, I would assume that it's like 80 through 83. Okay. At a guess. Okay. Uh, by that point in time, you had like things like the uh, TRS-80 Model 1s, mm. which were a far more portable device. So let's have a look. Uh, so it is a HP Model 85. Oh, uh, I want to guess between 79 and 82. So they were 2,750 US dollars when new. Cool. This is information from the HB Computer Museum, which was um, which was an Australian um, computer museum. Rupert. Uh, which is gone, apparently. Introduced in 1980, and catalogue reference was 1981. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and you could attach a plotter to it and various other printers. You could attach... Floppy disk drives, dual five and a quarters. Yeah. You could do color, color graphics on it, so you could do um, plots and charts, etc. Uh, so what does it say? Collector's notes. So this is from the HP Museum. So a very well-loved um, Australian collector who's unfortunately passed away. The so HP so when you five. say color graphics, you mean... Like as in, he could would print, allocate colours to things, and then it would print it in colour. Yeah, that's so great. So a lot of machines did that back at that time. So if you were doing bar charts or okay. pie charts yeah. or whatever, you might have on the screen had 
dots or lines or mm. you know differing patterns but then they would print out in colors on the on the device so okay. the hp85 is a trick